Lord. All right, bow your heads. Dear Heavenly Father, we, Lord, we come to you with, with humble hearts, Father, just thankful for your mercy and your grace, Father. Lord, we ask that you keep your hand upon us and guide us uh, and direct us through the difficulties uh, of this life right now, Father, living in this country with everything that's going on. We ask that you continue to lead us and guide us and have, keep your hand of protection upon us. Lord, uh, bless Michael today as he, uh, as he brings the word to us and uh, help it to be rightly divided and edifying to us and uh, help it to bless us and, and guide us as we, uh, as we go through the word, Father. Help us to uh, correctly um, give information so that it can benefit benefit people's lives and that their walk in Christ. Uh, Lord, we uplift everyone on our prayer list, that, Father, that you would meet them at the point of their need, and Lord, that your timing is perfect in all things, Father. We just ask that you uh, help us to conform to your will, Father, uh, that you would uh, bless us as, as, as according to thy will. Uh, bless the study tonight, Father, and uplift us, and thank you in all things, in the name of Jesus Christ, and the, the glory goes unto you, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ we pray, amen. amen. All right. <laughs> all right. Uh, well, uh, we've been going through, uh, and I, I forgot, I went to Ty's house today and, and didn't even think to bring the book. But uh, we're going to get that to you. Uh, for the last uh, probably about five studies, we've been going through uh, a section that we call the background. And we went uh, through each verse where Paul is mentioned in the Bible. And, and uh, we started out in Acts where he's first mentioned. Uh, and we spent probably about three weeks in Acts going through all the places where he's mentioned and discussing, you know, what was going on. And, and uh, the, we could see Paul's growing ministry. Uh, and I believe it was last week we went into uh, Romans and, and got through all the letters uh, in the New Testament, and all Paul's letters, uh, as I said, where, and wherein he was mentioned. Um, uh, Randy, what, what, what was your impression of, of all the background? Uh, it was helpful, uh, you know, introducing us to Paul and how every, uh, everyone, uh, like the beginning of his letters always got his name there as a signature. So we know it was written by him and it, it helps to, uh, Give a little bit of background about them. So, did uh, did did it did it help with the understanding or the uh, enlighten, enlightenment that uh, that we've kind of come on in the last couple of months? That uh, looking at Paul's total ministry, that he did he was speaking to the little flock at times, and I mean we just went through that whole study of of uh, about the little flock and seeing how that Paul was not only just addressing Gentiles, but he was addressing them also in certain ways. Right. Yeah. Uh, did, did, did going through it verse by verse help to highlight that and help to illuminate that to you? Um, I don't know if it helped to highlight it, but yeah, it, it helped to understand it a little bit more. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. It, it did, it did for me. Uh, it kind of, you know, it's, I don't want to say like an aha moment, but yeah. you know, some, sometimes when you, when you learn something new and you go oh, yeah. back and you yeah. look back over it again, you're like, Oh, gee whiz. I don't, I didn't believe I didn't see that last right, time. Right. Right. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, that's kind of how it, it was for me as we were going through these verses, I was able to get a, a better look at the fact that, yeah, there were times here. Where, where, where Paul's talking uh, directly to the little flock and, and uh, Jew, Jewish type uh, uh, things that he was discussing, things that really weren't 
weren't a- a- applicable to the to the body of Christ. Uh, you know, when you go to the judgment seat of Christ, and he talks about being being judged by fire, going through the fire. Uh, you you can look at that language, and you can see how definitely he was talking to the. Uh, he was definitely talking to the little flock there and not to the body of Christ because we we're, we're we're complete in Christ and you know we 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 were ju- we're judged at the cross with him uh so you know so it helps to understand that and kind of kind of reinforce those things uh and as i said uh where what we're going to be doing today we're starting uh you know pro- what is titled Paul's curriculum vitae or, or his, his, um, uh, what do you call it? His, uh, his resume, you know, when you, when you go on, on to a new job, uh, you know, you, you put a resume in, you let them know of, of your experience and, you know, uh, how, what qualifies you for the job or, you know, or as I said, the jobs that you've done in the past. So that, that's what we're going to be looking at when once Michael comes back here. We're going to be looking at what what Paul went through and what got him to the point of where God uh, chose him to use him, and you know what and what qualifications he had to help him along with uh, completing God's work. So, uh, had to mess up a little bit here. <clears throat> Uh, so he wasn't really considered a Pharisee, though, huh? Even though he was the son of a Pharisee. No, no, no. He he definitely was a Pharisee. Okay, got gotcha. you. Okay, yeah. yeah okay. No, he definitely was a Pharisee, and uh, and uh, as I said, you hear that you see the name uh, G- Gamaliel. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, but uh, he was a, uh, a a teacher of the of the Pharisees and the teacher of teachers. Uh-huh. Uh, a highly respected uh, professor and, and teacher of the Pharisees, and Paul was taught by him. Uh, and, and Michael will touch on that as soon as he, as soon as he gets back here. Uh, yeah. But uh, well, I, I suppose we could start ahead, right or no? Uh, can, you read, can you see that? Okay, or you want me to read it? Yeah, no, I have difficulty reading. Uh, if you want to go ahead and read, yeah, start, start, you can go ahead and start reading there, Randy. Okay, so we're on page 39 of the book for those who have it. And like Julius had prior said, Paul Circulum Vitale or something like that. Not sure, uh, but it's kind of like an outline cu- uh, curriculum vitae. Curriculum vitae. Thank you. Of course, I'll never remember that, but. Um, <laughs> So it's an outline of his life, so to speak. And uh, we, we begin with, uh, he was born approximately A.D. 5. Uh, he's uh, from the tribe of Benjamin. He was a Roman citizen from birth uh, in Taurus of Celia. His Hebrew name was Saul. And you can find that in Acts 7. 58 chapters 22 through 29. It gives you a little bit of background about that for those who want to look that up. Uh, His education, the finest available under Jewish scholar. And there's a name there. Gamma Gamma Mio, A.D. 20 to 30. Uh, I'll have to have Michael explain that one. Uh, then it goes on to say, Pharisee is in touching the law and also the son of a Pharisee, a brilliant legal mind. Uh, the persecution of the church of God, as the little flock, A.D. 30 to 35, saw witnesses with approval the stoning of Stephen. Uh, let, let's, let's stop here for one second. Yeah. So. So, like I said, um, and and you remember in the book of Romans where Paul uh, basically starts laying things out of his qualifications, and he talks about being uh, uh, that he is a a Pharisee and he is a he is of the tribe of Benjamin, which you know when when Jews identified themselves, that's how they identified themselves: certain sects with certain tribes. 
Uh, and as I said, he, <coughs> he was a Roman citizen, uh, ber- uh, born in, uh, in Tarsus. And as I said, we know that his Hebrew name was Saul. And then he started going by Paul, probably, probably trying to disassociate himself a little bit with um, the persecution of the church. Uh, you know, and, and as I said, uh, you know, you, 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 you look at um, certain people who have persecuted uh, others and, and have, ch- have been changed. And how accepting are people of the change? You know, uh, I, I brought up last week uh, uh, McG- George McGovern. And we remember back in, in his uh, the persecution of uh, blacks during the civil rights movement and denying uh, blacks to go to certain schools and everything and actually standing on the steps of a college blocking the uh, four students trying to come through. But you know, he was, uh, someone tried to assassinate him and he was shot and, and, and through all that found Christ and, and had a change. Uh, but you know, there weren't, there were some people who were still very mistrusting uh, of him. (laughs) You know, they, they didn't trust that the change was genuine. And, And Paul went through that a lot, that, uh, people did a lot of the Christians of the church that he was persecuting, did not trust the fact that the change in him was genuine, that that his his uh, his conversion, that it was that it was true. That you know, many of them thought that you know this was just a ploy to get you know to get in close to the Christians so he could arrest them and, and persecute persecute them. So that's probably why he went from the name Saul to, and started using the name Paul, but. Uh, uh, and as I said, in, in his education, and you notice he was born in, in 5 AD, but and started his, uh, his education in 10 AD. So from the age of five years old to about 25, uh, this is when he sat under uh, Gamamiel. Wow. Uh, and, and as I said, Paul, Paul was pretty much trained like a lawyer. And if you when you read his letters, you can you can you can see that uh, that lawyerly teaching uh, that he had uh, in in some of the way that he presents his some of his arguments. Uh, He 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 likes to do a thing that my father used to like to do. (laughs) My father would uh, ask a question that he already knew the answer to. (laughs) <laughs> and and kind of uh highlighting or reiterating uh a point so and, so the, the the first uh like 20 years here or whatever from 5 to 25 he's he's learning the the jewish laws and tradition is that correct in saying that yes that's when he that's when he's being trained as a as a pharisee under G- okay. Gam- yep. Gamamiel. so he's you know they're they're studying scripture they're studying uh you know the, the the not only the Torah, but yeah. uh, they had other books that they were they were studying. You know, you know, Michael Michael loves to harp uh, and talk about um, the um, uh, when you're dead, when, when you're dead, you're dead. Right. Yeah. Uh, and he and you remember in the book of Luke where it talked about um, Abraham and the uh, uh, Lazarus. That story where the uh, they, in the, Jesus Christ was telling the parable, and he was saying how you know that the they were in Abraham, and they were you know the 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 poor man and the rich man had, had both died, and you know that's the only place in the Bible where that story is told. Uh, and what you need to do is you need to go back and find out where that story came from and where that story came from. It actually came from Jewish teachings from other Jewish writings that were not part of the scripture. And when Jesus Christ was telling that parable, he was actually telling them uh, the, the story and using their teachings, their incorrect teachings against them. Uh, and you, and you have to read that all the way through and where the rich man, and when when the rich man is told 
to go to Moses to listen to Moses and the prophets, his answer is no. No, I'm not going to listen to Moses and the prophets. I'm not going to listen to the word of God. I'm not going to listen to the scriptures. So, but that teaching about in Abraham and Abraham's bosom, that actually came from Jewish teachings uh, out of other writings. So that was the type of thing that Paul was, was studying uh, the other, some of the other Jewish writings. And, and when Michael gets back, I, I can't remember the name of the, of the writings, but they're, they're well known. You'll probably recognize them once Michael says the name. It, 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 I'm sorry, was that Brian? No, not the Tanakh. Uh, yes, yes, some of the other Jewish things. And, 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 and many of these things uh, may have come from their culture and their traditions. Uh, and if you, you think about it, uh, uh, the Jews were in, enslaved by the Egyptians for over 400 years. Uh, so many of their cultural teachings and traditions probably came from Egypt. Uh, all right, so, uh, so as I said, so these, these were the type of teachings that Paul was receiving over that, over that 25 year period under uh, Gamma Meal, I believe the pronunciation is. So, uh, and as I said, he, in Romans, he says that I, I, I am a Pharisee of the Pharisees. Uh, in any time in, in the uh, Hebrew language, when you're repeating something, like where when Christ was talking, he would say, truly, truly, that was to like say, pay attention, because what I'm about to say is, is important. So for Paul to say that I am a Pharisee of the Pharisees meant that, that uh, you know, he was he was way up there and considered himself uh, top echelon of the Pharisees. And and in taking on the persecution of the church, uh, he he was he, he saw himself as protecting the Hebrew teachings. Uh, so he, as I said, so he was way up there as the Pharisee, and and as I said, with and and part of that that lineage that he had was that fabulous teacher, uh, a Jew, that Jewish scholar. And so that's. Kind of like, you know, when somebody uh, is talking about, you know, what college did you go to? If, you know, if you say, if you say OCC, where, where I went, which is a great school, but um, it's not going to garner too much respect in the, in the circles, you know. If, but, you know, if you, if you sit there and say you went to Princeton or you went to Harvard, uh, that's going to garner so much more respect because of the qualifications to get into a school like that and the uh, curriculum that's taught in that school it's it's top echelon so like I said somebody could have could have went to Harvard and, and skipped all their classes and you know kind of skated through and not really got too much from it and somebody could have went to OCC and really busted their behind and did research and everything else and got a great education but just because you put on that <laughs> you put on that I went to Harvard that's going to garner certain respect. And just as Paul saying that, that he was taught under Gamaliel, that garners certain respect. And they're like, oh, okay, you know, we need to take notice of this person because this person sat under a fantastic teacher. So the Talmud, that's it. Thank you, Brian. <laughs> uh, and that's where that teaching about uh Abraham's bosom came. It came from the Talmud. Okay. All right, so Randy, if you can pick up at uh, Pharisees as touching the law. Um, and then it goes on to say the persecution of the church of God, in parentheses, the little flock, that's the church of God, AD 30 to 35, Saul witnesses with approval the stoning of Stephen. And then we have in parentheses, Saul was present when the one-year prob probation of grace expires. The parable, the, the parable of the fig tree. Acts okay. 7, 
57 through 60, AD 32 or 33. Okay, let's, let's stop right there for a second. Yeah. Now, uh, what do we know of the uh, parable of the fig tree? Is that where you can be uh, like drafted in? Uh, nope. Oh, okay. My Bible should be either on the table or it's in the, in the, me and your mom's room. Uh, Randy, you got your your uh, Bible there with you? Uh, yeah. Go to Luke chapter thirteen. Okay, hold on. <clears throat> Luke chapter 13. Yep, I believe it starts at about yeah, yeah, yeah. chapter uh, verse eight. Eight, okay. And I, 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 I got it. Okay, yeah, no, let's see. Then he said unto the dresser. Nope, it starts earlier. Hold on. Okay. Those eighteen who in the tower. Okay, uh, it starts at verse six. So start start reading at verse six, Randy. Okay. He spake also this parable: a certain man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came and sought fruit whereon and found none. So that being said, that would be a certain man, that would be uh, Jesus, uh, came here to the earth. Uh, he's looking for fruit, like fellow, you know, believers, and he found none. I could be wrong on that, but uh, then he said unto the dresser of his vineyard, behold, these three years I come seeking fruit on this fig tree and found none. Cut it down. Why cumbereth it the ground? And he answering said unto them, Lord, let it alone this year also, till I shall dig about it and dung it. And if it bear fruit, well, and if not, then after thou shalt cut it down. And he was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath. Okay, you can stop there. Yeah. So, so here we have the, the parable of the vine dresser. And where he's talking about uh, in, in verse six, he says, and in, in he spake also this parable, a certain yeah. man talks about the fig tree and the vineyard. That's talking about Christ coming on his, in his earthly mission, that he's coming as the Messiah and he's coming and he's looking to be, to find a, an accepting Israel, uh, an accepting of, of, the, of the Messiah. But he says he comes and he says he finds none because Israel rejected, rejected the uh, the Messiah. So he's saying, uh, cut it down. They 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 rejected the, their Messiah. Cut it, cut them down. And and he says no. He says you know what? Give them one more year. Let me let me dig about it and dung it. In other words, let me offer them the kingdom again. And get an extension of one year. Let them see if they'll accept it. And he says, if they don't, they're very well. They cut it down. So this is where Israel's getting a one-year extension on the offer of the kingdom. Uh, and and the end the end of that year was the stoning of Stephen, where Paul was holding the coats. And that's that's our first introduction to Paul in Scripture. And I just saw Michael pop back in there. <laughs> so, uh, and uh, we, we, we did get into it a little bit, Michael. Uh, Go ahead, we were... Jenny. Just, just finish what you're doing. I'm feeling real sick today. 
Two things real quick, though. The name of the book was the Talmud. Yeah, the Talmud. Yeah, Brian. Brian. Yeah, remembered. yeah, we got that answer. Yeah. And also, uh, the guys it was not uh, George McGovern. It was George Wallace. George Wallace. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's all right. We just don't want to accuse the wrong guy. <laughs> okay, <laughs> Mike, take a break. I hope you feel better, buddy. Thank yeah. You. yeah, I'm not feeling too good. So thank you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so so we have this is where we have that that one year extension in the introduction to Saul of Tarsus, uh, and uh, and as I said, uh, so he as I said, so he's holding holding the cult at the stoning of Stephen, uh, and and then he really he really starts persecuting the church after that, uh, and Michael uh, with the pro the pronunciation of Paul's teacher was uh, Gamma Meal. Must have stepped out again. Okay. So, yeah, I don't uh, think he's feeling good. I think he, he's yeah. probably done for the night. <laughs> yeah, probably so. Uh, but so, so like I said, so Saul, so Saul's conversion happens uh, about AD thirty-seven in in Acts nine uh, one through nineteen. And uh, uh, let's see if I can I get you to turn and read there, Randy. Okay, so continuing on Saul's conversion, AD 37, Acts 9, chapters 1 through 19. You guys can go ahead and read that when you have time. Preaches the gospel of God, okay, in the synagogues. The gospel of God confirming Christ as Messiah according to the law and prophets, affirming what he had previously denied. So here's a change in, in Paul's thinking and teaching. The Apostle, suspicious of Paul when he goes to Jerusalem in A.D. 40. Um, Paul spends three years in Arabia, then returns to Damascus. Okay, and then we go into Paul's first missionary journey, A.D. 47 to 49. And it looks like it starts with uh, Acts 13, 1 through 14, and then 28. This is Paul had uh, traveling companions, Barnabas and John Mark, and his major route was Cyprus and Turkey. Um, in Antioch, the Holy Spirit sets Paul apart and Barnabas and John come with them as a helper. Okay, let me, and then let's they stop. sail. Let's, oh, go let's, ahead. Let's, let's stop there for one second. So here it talks about the apostles being suspicious of Paul when he when he goes to Jerusalem in AD 40. And uh, Paul, Paul, you remember, goes to Jerusalem uh, in Acts chapter 15. Uh, that's when he meets with uh, Peter and uh, James, Jesus Christ's brother, and um, John, and who he who he calls the pillars of the faith. Now, as I said, so he, he, we see him in in Arabia for three years, and then then he returns to Damascus in, in Galatians one through seven uh, one seventeen. And in a couple, in, in Galatians seven is when he's when he's actually it, it runs uh, parallel with uh, some of Acts in Acts chapter fifteen. In Galatians chapter seven, are actually talking about the same event, the same meeting. But now Paul's in Arabia for three years. Do do we know where Paul receives his uh, revelation from 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 Christ from God? Well, we say on the road to Damascus. So, well, on the road to Damascus is where he's where he's uh, he first encounters Christ and, and is saved. But he he receives over a three year period he receives uh, revelation from God. So he he's receiving the information about salvation by grace and all these things. Do. Do we know where he's receiving this? And it, this is very I think important. It says here Arabia, correct? Ara Arabia, yes, but there's 
Mount he, he's actually at Mount Sinai. Oh, okay. Now, why is why is Mount Sinai important? Isn't that where Moses got his uh, instructions? That's where, yeah, that's where Moses got his instructions. <laughs> that's where that you know. So that's where. Yeah. So it, Par it, a it, parallel, it, if you will, it's running yeah. is running parallel. Yeah. You know, and and there there's very many parallels in the Bible. Uh, do you remember when uh, when Abraham took Isaac up on the mountain to uh, to sacrifice him? Do you realize that that was the same mountain range that where Christ was crucified at Golgotha? You know, so so there's many parallels in the Bible, and, and this is one of those parallels that Paul is receiving his his revelation from from God uh, that he's receiving it at the same place where God gave his revelation to Moses. Uh, and you have many people that that want to discount Paul or they want to say that, you know, Moses and what the revelation that Moses received is is so much better and, and more perfect than the revelation that Paul received. But here we see God bringing Paul to the exact same place where he brought Moses. And how many people have you ever seen that? deny that moses received god's word i mean you you would most people would have their tongue cut off first <laughs> before denying that you know what moses received was genuine from god but paul receiving uh the revelation that god gave him in the exact in the same place that moses received his and it is just as important and to us it's more important more important because we're not under the law that that message wasn't given to us what paul received is what was given to us and it should be uh it, it <laughs> we need to give it the proper respect and give it the the proper hearing uh where you know where i where we've we've come across people that come straight out and reject the teachings of paul uh which is re rejecting the revelation of god so, so we need to understand. I want. I wanted to highlight that 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 those three years that that, that Paul is spending in Arabia, that 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 was that's where he's receiving man his his revelations from God, and and he's getting it right at the same place where Moses got his revelation. All right. So pick up there, Randy, at uh, Paul's uh, missionary journey. Okay, so uh, it just goes on to talk about Antioch. 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 The Holy Spirit sets Paul apart, and Barnabas and John Mack comes with them as a helper. Uh, do, do, do we do we realize who John Mark is? When we when we see that name John Mark, do we do we understand who Mark who he is? Uh, no, Mark is he's the one who wrote the gospel of Mark. So is John Mark two different people or is that one person? No, no, no. That, that's that's one name. Just okay, like John Peter, Mark. Just, okay. Just like Peter is also Cephas. And Simon. Yeah, Simon, Peter, Cephas. Yeah, okay. okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so John Mark is, is this. Uh, uh, I, don't, I don't know why he has those two names, but. But that's who it is. It's the one who wrote the um, book of Mark. Okay. The the book of Mark. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and it's kind of funny. You know, when I was growing up, I always thought that uh, the writers of the book of the Bible were all all the ones who you know were following Jesus and his apostles. Uh, you know, the the that that inner circle. Uh, I didn't realize that you had John Mark who who. Uh, who wrote a book and you had Luke who was not in that inner, he wasn't, he was a disciple, but he wasn't, he wasn't a, a, uh, you know, one of the inner circle, one of the 12. Uh, so you have people, a lot of people writing scriptures who weren't in that inner circle, uh, but were witnesses of, uh, 
of Jesus Christ's uh, earthly mission. Okay, so I wanted to bring up that point who John Mark was. A lot of people, we don't know who exactly who he was. <laughs> All right. All right, you want me to continue on? Yep, yeah, pick up at okay. two there. Yeah, okay, so, and then it goes on uh, saying how they were in, in Pergia. Uh, John Mark then returns to Jerusalem and he deserts Paul and Barnabas. Uh, then they go on to what is known commonly today as Turkey. Paul's longest sermon we have on record, Acts 13, with many responding to Paul's message. Jewish leaders drive them out, and God directs Paul to focus on the Gentiles, and many Gentiles believe. Hold on one second, please. Sorry. I got you. So, yeah, so uh, talking about uh, Paul's longest sermon, this is the one when uh, the young man falls asleep. He's sitting in a window on, like, the third floor of the upper floors. And he uh, he falls asleep and, and falls to his death, <laughs> which uh, I guess it's very lucky because I I used to fall asleep in church all the time. I was I was I was famous for that, <laughs> so I was lucky I was never sitting up in a window. <laughs> but uh, uh, here, here Paul lays his hands on on this young man and, and uh, resuscitates him. And what was his name, Brian? Eutychus, okay. Um, so, uh, so like I said, it talks about how Paul, and when you're reading through the book of Acts, you see in many places, uh, three places, I believe, where <clears throat> Paul basically gets fed up with going to the, to the synagogues and to the Jews, and he finally turns to the Gentiles and says, you know, that, that, uh, that you, you reject this message, uh, thus he won't continue to give it to you. And it takes him like three times when he finally finally gets to that point and says, you know, enough is enough. Uh, you know, I'm tired of, tired of dealing with you, being uh, stiff-necked and everything as they are. Well, that's an important, important part to uh, know, correct? I mean... Yeah, it is an important part to know. Uh, and as I said, we, we, we have to... Uh, we have to look at ta Paul's total ministry because, yeah. I mean, I was under the impression also uh, until this year that that Paul only spoke to the Gentiles. Right. Uh, and, and that all his things were only to the Gentiles and that, you know, that God had separated him out. And, and God did separate him out, out and tell him to go to the Gent only to the Gentiles. It just took a while for Paul to listen. Right. As I said, you know, he said he had a heart for his own people uh -huh. and, and he wanted them to have the message of grace. Right. So, so he wanted them to, to be saved. They, he wanted them to have that relationship with Jesus Christ. So he continued to go to them, even though they, they rejected him. Uh, they uh, you remember on the on the steps when he was preaching and they they rioted and they were going to kill him and. Uh, he had to be rescued by a Roman soldier. And, uh, uh -huh. you know, so Paul went through a lot and continually going to Israel, trying to give them the truth. Um, and as I said, wh what you find is when you carry the truth, people are going to reject it. And you, um, you know, we, we, we have this view and, and, and I had this view too first when I was first getting into uh, 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 preaching and everything like that. And even though I'd seen what my, what Michael had went through, yeah. uh, in, including me, uh, Michael, I, I, I used to have some great lies to tell Michael why I wouldn't come into church. <laughs> 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 I used to, I, I used to make great excuses, you know, and uh, we struggled with uh, the, the ministry for years and not until uh, God removed Michael and sent him to China, and then uh, things happened with me, and I, I got serious about the Word of God and, and my walk, and, and started started preaching myself, picked up right. the church, 
Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. uh, so but, but when you carry truth, you, you're usually going to walk alone uh, and people are going to reject you. Now, if you want to give people a show and thrill, frills and all other kind of thing, maybe maybe you'll pack a church out. Right. <laughs> you know, but uh, it's got to be how important is it to you to carry the truth? Right. Uh, you know, and as I said, I, I, I'd rather preach truth to three or three or four people than lies to, uh, you know, a thousand. Correct. So. Uh, so we're going to we're going to cut off right there today on page 40 uh, and we'll pick up pick up there next week. Uh, I think we're probably right around 830, aren't we? Let's see here. Yep, 826. OK. So uh, we'll pick up there next week. And Ty, I will try to get the, a book to you. If I got to drop it in your mailbox, uh, right, cool. we'll, we'll get one to you. And uh, like I said, uh, does, does anybody have any questions for um, the, the little bit that we covered today? No, but the next the next line is interesting. So I, I'm looking forward to that next Wednesday. Okay. Yeah, number right. six there at the bottom of the page. Yep. Oh, yeah. Yep. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, we'll probably actually go to that, to the, the verses on that and uh, oh, read okay. over that. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you want to close us up in prayer, Randy? I'm asking a lot of you today. Nah, yeah. you're fine. It's about time I uh, pitched in a little bit. I feel guilty, so. But I, I'm, I'm still... I'm, I'm getting the full cup of milk now, but I'm still, you know, I'm still learning a lot. So I appreciate you guys being patient with me. Uh, we're, God bless you Randy, all. We're, we're, we're all, we're all learning. You know, <laughs> so. there never, there never will come a day when we got the whole picture. Gotcha. You know? yeah. <laughs> so I appreciate your patience and understanding. Lord, we ha- humbly bow our heads again tonight for you, Lord, for we know when uh, there's more than two of us in a room that you hear us, Lord. And you know all things, you hear all things, you see all things. We hope that we edified your word tonight, Lord, uh, in rightly dividing it and getting a better understanding of your apostle Paul, Lord, and uh, what he means to the Bible, Lord, and the importance of of his books in the Bible, Lord, to help us understand the Bible in its entirety. Uh, We lift all those up on our prayer list, Lord, uh, to you. And that uh, you will deem to see fit uh, your wants and needs, Lord, as your timing is perfect, as Julius mentioned earlier. Uh, We pray that Michael gets better over his stomach bug, Lord. And uh, help us to go out into the world, Lord, and be a light when there's so much darkness. Uh, We do this while with knowing all the honor and the glory is yours, Lord. In your precious Son, Jesus Christ, we pray until we meet again on Sunday or next Wednesday. Amen. Amen. And uh, yeah, we're gonna and we'll be continuing on Sunday with that uh, the study on creationism. Now, yeah, I thought that was good. The Genesis thing. Yeah. Yeah, and then the next class is because that this week was kind of like an introduction. Yeah. Uh, so it's going to get a little bit more deeper into it uh, on Sunday. So uh, try not to miss it. I think uh, we can all really truly benefit. You know, when, you, when you're talking to non-believers, a lot of times uh, that's where the point where you got to meet them at first. You know, uh, when you're talking to a non-believer, it's kind of right. hard to sit there. And Creation say, versus evolution and and. Pinpoint. Yeah, because yeah. like I said, you got to meet them where they're at, and it's kind of yeah. hard to sit there and say, "Well, you know, well, you know." In Acts thirty-five, it says this. To, well, yeah, they're not even going to somebody gonna, yeah, who yeah. doesn't who doesn't believe the Bible that doesn't you know? resonate with them. Yeah. Right. So you know, so in it, being able to go to creation and sit there and show the hand the hand fingerprint of God and where right. God is, yeah, uh, that can get them to that next step to where now they'll listen to scripture. Right. Amen. Yeah. So, yeah. So, I, yeah, agree. So I think yeah. it'll be, it'll be very true. beneficial to all of us. All right. All right. So uh, thank you everybody for attending tonight and uh, we'll hope to see you Sunday. Okay. Have a good night guys. All right. God yeah. bless. Yeah. Bye.